If you guys are men, if you got any ounce of manhood, listen to Tom. Trust me. Bottom line is, you're anti-marriage, pro-slut. Yeah, and, and most uh, guys are. <laughs> You said it one time, and you keep saying it. You know why divorce is so expensive? Because it's worth it. You know what? You are the best thing that has happened to women, and they should just listen to you. I started listening to you, and you kind of confirmed to me how men really are. Yeah. I should have listened to you before I got married. <laughs> a lot of people should have listened to me before they got married. <laughs> You know, that's the worst thing you could do to a kid is be a single mother, religious, and raising a boy. I thought you were kind of skeptical, but now I, I listen to oh, you. Oh, I am skeptical. Calling. What's wrong with being skeptical? Uh, I was skeptical. I thinking that maybe this maybe this could work. And as soon as I gave it a try, took myself off the market. I ended up right where you said I would. And, man, I wish I would have kept listening to you for more than just the three years that I did. These Lakers fans, they're so delusional. I call them just like the primary went on. They're, you know, they're the Hillary Clintons of the basketball. They're, you know, they can't concede that it's over. It's done. So let me, let me break this down to you here. Not only are the Lakers toast, there's the butter that goes on the toast. There's the orange juice. There's the grits that goes with the butter. Please. They better be careful. They, they better be careful. They're going to be the George McGoverns of the NBA. <laughs> she does call me. She do call me, and she do want to hook up, but I don't really have time for her. Is that so? Yes, sir. Because you're getting more ass than a toilet seat? Oh, man, call me toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so, so when you talk about TPing the entire neighborhood, it has a whole different <laughs> meaning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, I've been married for two years now, and I've, I've been banging this chick for about six months, but one day I might decide to settle down and quit messing around and, you know, have a kid or get serious, you know, who knows. But in the meantime... I, I like this. Fun. He's a married guy who tells me one day I might settle down. I'm so tired of people in general, especially women, carrying this notion on that men are worthless, that they don't need us, but yet they have absolutely no problem getting us to sign the dotted line so that eventually they can spread their legs for somebody else and take half of our income and stay in our house that we bought to pay for their dream of having kids and having a family that they constantly nag us about. And by the way, one thing that really pissed me off is that I heard Oprah Winfrey one time, actually several times on her show, say that the hardest job in the world is a stay-at-home mom and they don't get any respect. What about fathers that are chained to their desk and their miserable jobs to pay for that very dream of them staying home, to love their wife, to love their child. Why don't you go to the goddamn gym, stay in shape for your husband, and do your part, you goddamn bitch. A woman who's married to some to some guy uh, goes and has an affair with the teenage gardener. And is having sex. Now, if, if you're having sex with somebody like that without using birth control, why would you do that? What's well, his responsibility to use a con No, if you, it's your responsibility. First of all, if you're having sex with a minor, which is illegal, it's your responsibility at least to try to keep from having babies. The person you're having sex with is an irresponsible minor. You need you need to get a life, guy. From the back of the back lots of a movie studio in Hollywood, it's Flash Friday. And you know what they say about dark Italians? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is. Not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio on this Flash Friday. I promised you I was going to be here all summer for Flash Friday, and here I am. 
While others are running reruns this summer, I will be here for Flash Friday. Dean is particularly loud today. He's got to stop hitting the energy drinks before broadcast time. Seriously. Seriously, dude. You gotta stop. <laughs> anyway, yes, it is Flash Friday. Uh, Flash Friday is the day that the loyal Tom Likas listeners turn their headlights on. Wherever you may be, turn them on. Let us see the headlights. And ladies, if you see a guy with the headlights on, you know what to do. You've got to expose your cans. Show them your knockers. Let's see your rack girls. Give the guys an incentive for showing their loyalty to the Tom Likas show. Look around the freeways. Do you see how many people have their uh, their headlights on? I'm not talking about the daytime running lights, you yuts. I'm talking about people having their full-fledged headlights on. Those are the Likas listeners. That's them. Look around on the freeway. Look around on the street. Look around the parking lot. People have their headlights on. That's why. So, ladies, uh, we flash you. You flash us. If you see a nice pair of cans, call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. And, ladies, if you've got a nice set of cans, you'd like to show them off and you're in a particular area where you haven't seen a headlight yet, you can call me as well at 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. I am here. I'll be honest with you. I took Kobe Bryant's advice last night, and I drank heavily. If you heard Kobe's post-game comments last night, but... uh, Sounded like a good idea to me. So uh, Gary Zbranski and I, we uh, we started over at the Palm Restaurant downtown. Actually, we started with our malt liquor taste test yesterday. <laughs> well, we did. A blind taste test. You had to bring that up. Of some of the finest malt liquors yes. we could find. Well, we did have some agreement, though. We had some consensus. We did, indeed. They were not all awful. Uh, but, of course, if we say which ones were good and which ones were bad, we might... We might offend some people. So we'll just say that we had some agreement among the crew here. Yeah. So, yes, we did start with that. Thank you for reminding us of that, Gary. Yeah. And then after we, uh, well, Gary, Gary, of course, earlier uh, was having a conversation with our engineer, Art. And uh, Art is saying, so were you guys plowed last night? And he's like, no, I think we're doing pretty good. And, and, and the thing is, until you sit and recount every drink we had, the... We were testing a malt liquor in the studio yesterday, and then we headed downtown to the Palm and uh, had a pregame martini, and then we went into Staples Center. Oh, yeah, we were doing great. We went into Staples Center after that, and we, uh, let's see, we had uh, beer, more beer, another beer, and then you, you, after you've got about three under your belt, then you've got to have the uh, the large order McDonald's greasy french fries, which, what's better than that in the entire world? Perfect. We uh, hit the uh, the Royal Room there at Staples Center. Did a little more drinking at halftime. When we needed the drinks most, though, that's when we were drinking the least. That was uh, the fourth quarter. I, I, I think I needed to, to smoke crack at that point. It was uh, totally out of control. And then finally, uh, we went back to the Palm where my car was parked. That's right. <laughs> And uh, we uh, sat down, did a did a bottle of fine Bordeaux, and then we rolled on to, uh, we stopped at the Foundry on Melrose last night. And you ever do this when you go out drinking? You know, everything's going fine, you're feeling pretty good, and then somebody, it's usually me, by the way, I'm known for this, you can't leave well enough alone. You know, I'm effed up, <laughs> I got a pretty good buzz on, why don't we just leave it at that? But we couldn't just leave it at that. Gary's like uh, the owner of the Foundry. Our friend Greenie's like, I think Greenie's have a little uh, post-game party tonight over at the Foundry. So we we head over to the Foundry last night. And the Foundry is, this is the new hip thing now at uh, bars here in town. Uh, the Foundry is very anxious for you to try uh, the, the new item they've got uh, on the drink menu, absinthe. Just what we needed after a day of malt liquor, amber ales, 
martinis. Let's stop by the foundry and have some absinthe. And I know why they call it absinthe, because I was ready to call in and say I'm going to be absinthe from work today. <laughs> and I think that's how I would have pronounced absent. But I decided to come in here anyway. <laughs> how could I not be here? The entire city is uh, is nursing a hangover in one sense or another. Los Angeles is just uh, reeling. By the way, a little short sampling of Sports Talk Radio. By the way, I, I want to welcome all the Sports Talk Radio listeners who uh, now have nothing to call in about for the rest of the summer. <laughs> welcome to our program. Good to have you. Not many of you out there, but good to have you. But I did a little sampling. And I'll bet we'll get some calls about this today. You know, everybody is asking the following question. You know, whose fault was this that the Lakers had, like, the best first quarter I've ever seen them have? Certainly the best of these playoffs. And then they completely, completely unraveled in the, in the final quarter. They just completely became undone. Whose fault was it? And there were people saying, oh, it's Phil Jackson. Oh, Kobe only had less than 20 points. Oh, this, oh, that. But the really interesting one, and I'm not so politically correct as to not mention uh, what I'm about to mention, because everybody knows I do it in the right spirit. Uh, there were a number of African-American callers to sports talk shows today who said the Lakers, get this, I heard one caller say exactly, I'm going to quote him exactly, exactly what I'm about to tell you. Lakers have too many European players. They're soft. And one caller said, they better plan on getting a little more urban next year if they plan to win in the playoffs. And he referred to the Lakers center as Pau Gasoft. I'm just telling you what I heard. And I am willing to bet you, I don't want to turn this into sports talk myself because I don't want to have a point seven rating like the sports talk stations, but uh, I, <laughs> uh, but I am willing to bet you that there's a number of our uh, loyal African-American listeners who probably are say saying and thinking the same thing today because I heard it many times, many times. And I don't know if that's true or not true. I don't know if it's a, you know, because let's face it, uh, Although he's Argentinian, Manu Ginobili played most of his uh, basketball in Italy. And uh, he certainly did well with the San Antonio Spurs. And uh, there are other European players who have had success over the years. Vladi Divac was a good player. Uh, yeah, I could, I, If I sit and think about it, there are quite a few European players who've done well in the NBA. And by the way, Tony Parker may be black, but he's from France. Okay, he's French. So is it about being black or being European? Because there's you know, a lot of people may not believe this if you've never traveled to Europe. There's a lot of black people who live in Europe, a lot of them. So if they play basketball, are they soft because they lived in Europe? I don't know. But I, I heard this call to shows many times. And um, I'm just throwing it out there. There it is. Now it's laying out there flat as a pancake. It's laying out there as flat as Tim Russert, baby. It's laying out there. That is offensive. Jesus. What are we doing? I understand if people are pissed about that. Anyway, yes, Flash Friday, headlights on, women showing their knockers. If you're not, Dean J. D'Amelio, who was not at the game last night, he's in good shape and he's been taking batting practice, so uh, he's ready for you. But now, all you have to do here is dial in. Jam. Like is 1 800 5 800 860. Um, just got out of work, had a rough day. I'm like, man, how can this Friday go any worse? I turn on my headlight. The first thing I see on my left is this beautiful young lady. She's in her camera, and I look over, and she's smiling at me. There I see a couple of nice jugs. Thanks. Really? Yeah, you just made my Friday perfect. You just made my whole day like this. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. Flash Friday, 
morning. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Jason on this Flash Friday. Hello. Tom. Jason. I got to say I love you, man. Thank you. I love you and I love my job. <laughs> I, I drive around in a service truck. I'm coming up from the 405 South to the 55 North merger. Wow. Blue Corolla on my left-hand side. I just flipped on my lights. Two girls in it. Look back as I pull up next to them. They both show the cans. Really? Both of them. You, right as you started talking, man. Just out of the intro and right as you started talking. Were they hot? Incredibly so. Really? Incredibly so. All you fellas out there, if you ain't got your light turned on, you're morons. Wow. <laughs> How old were these girls? Uh, probably around early 20s, 22, 23, maybe. Oh, isn't that wonderful? I mean, they got windows down, and I can hear you coming out of their car as well. How great is that? Are you seeing other headlights on out there? I'm seeing some other headlights on, yeah. Good. I'm seeing other headlights on. I'm hoping that these girls are getting the other guys, too. Sounds good to me. That, that just made a long day a lot better. <laughs> Sounds good to me, Jason. Now, if you were listening to KLOS in the afternoon, would you be getting bare breasts on the 405 or the 55 or any freeway? Oh, heck no. <laughs> would you, close to would it. you want to see the bare breasts of a KLOS listener? Oh, uh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> They'd probably have to lift up the bottom of the dress to show me those. See, and with the, uh, with the uh, stretched out uh, heart tattoo, uh, uh, not, not an actual heart, the band heart. <laughs> <laughs> sitting down on top of their shoes. That's right. A little, little <laughs> tattoo of Anne and Nancy Wilson with stretch marks in it. I'd rather see the perky ones. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Tom. Blow me up. I'll blow you up, baby. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Tim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Tim. I would ask you how you're doing, but if you're like me and some other Laker fans, you probably feel disgusted. I am in pain, and I mean physical pain today. Of course, the absinthe didn't help. Not at all. But, uh, yes, I'm in pain. And by the way, we were sitting right next to Tory Hunter last night, and we were right down where the action was last night. Well, I actually got to get up in the, in the owner's suite, so that was good for me. How did you get up there? Uh, went with my buddy Frankie Sanchez, and he, he got me up in there. Oh, Frankie. Now yeah, I know who to call next time. There you go. But, Tom, I wanted to comment on this. I wanted to put you up on game a little bit about uh, our European problems. Um, in the streets, in the hood, where we, where we really talk about this and really, really get down, we need more gorillas on the team. And that's, that's the term we refer to as gorillas. They come out, they go hard in the paint, they don't back down when the times get hard. And, and you're right, we do have way too many Europeans on the team. They're just soft. And it's not just Gasol, it's all of them. And Lamar Odom is my new honorary European player. <laughs> you know, first half last night I was saying to Gary, I was saying, look at him playing. Is he back on the weed or something? He looks great. <laughs> Oh, man, I wish he was. <laughs> I wish. Yeah, hey, Tom, I love you long time. First time I've been with you through adolescence. 31, no kids, no broad in my life. Headed out to Vegas right now to wipe my sorrows away and didn't even have to ask permission. Wow. So, uh, hey, can I go out Tim Russell style with a... No cough. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Interesting combination. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Our engineer, Art, he's going green this year. I think he went green last year too. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Nobody even knows why that was offensive yet. Someone's going to read about it or hear about it, and then the calls are going to start coming in. They don't even know. Okay. We'll just wait till that happens. Travis on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yes, sir, Father. How's it going, Travis? Oh, it's going great. Um, I listened to the tail end of your absence story, and I'm uh, very curious. I was under the impression I was still illegal in the States. And, uh, what's absinthe, the getting it at? absinthe was illegal. And about eight months ago, I believe it was, uh, uh, there was a change in policy. 
I also believe absinthe is somewhat uh, reformulated from uh, the days when uh, people were said to have gone insane. Yes, exactly. And so uh, absinthe is uh, back on the menu again. Well, that's good. Uh, it's good news, and I'm, uh, I'm always finding that you got uh, all kinds of news on the show. You're a very wise man, and I appreciate the knowledge and the forte that you pass on to all us young men. Well, on booze, we are ahead of the curve on this show. <laughs> we are at the cutting edge of alcohol. That's right. Well, can you take me out, Father, with a bong hit and a Kobe? I certainly can, Travis. Here you go. This is about us. She's so special to me. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Yeah, the air I breathe. She's so special to me. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Rick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? It's going okay. Awesome. I'm just uh, shocked, shocked, disappointed on the guys, but... You know, here's the true Laker fans now. Guys that know that they can win three, even two at Boston. But uh, let's keep them off the bandwagon. Those, uh, like the Celtics bandwagon people. <laughs> By the way, Celtics. You know. <laughs> I'm just thinking, that's the phone number of the average Laker fan trying to get rid of the game five pairs they right. have. Celtics. I think last night was the first time I've seen you come as close as you did into uh, to actually get into a fight with somebody, with those Celtics fans. Yes, that's a, this is actually a true story. Uh, you know, people think I'm not serious about this stuff or that I'm just some guy who sits behind the microphone. But last night after the game, the uh, usual uh, course last night, the Celtics not only won, but they embarrassed uh, the Lakers and Southern California. And, uh, of course, you had... Uh, the big fat morons from Boston who flew in, bought a ticket up at the 300 section, and after the game they all go over the palm and then like like go around like strutting around like 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 gloating and stuff. Right. So Gary and I, we and this is the Palm downtown, a block from Staples Center at 11th and Flower. That's where we were last night. Uh huh. And uh, these uh, morons, we had a table at the bar. So there's like if you've ever been to the Palm in uh, downtown LA, there's a there's a full fledged bar, and then there are some standing tables, and then there are some regular booths where you could sit down and eat dinner. Gary and I got a booth at the bar, and we sit down and we're waiting to get served. And these four guys are standing around, you know, of course, talking as loudly as like, hey, the fourth quarter, you see that? You see that? And so and first of all, this guy, I swear this is true, he's carrying one of these. Um, one of these uh, pussy uh, knapsacks, and he takes the bag, and he drops it on the bench next to Gary in the booth. He says, hey, you mind uh, watching this? And so, like, Gary doesn't know what to say, so he just, like, lets it, lets it go. The guy then, standing with his friends, like, right next to our table, uh, puts puts his glass on our table. He's got a drink. He's like, now he's putting the glass down on our table, and he's got his bag sitting next to Gary. And and finally, they brought us the bread basket, and 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 some one of these four, one of these guys' asses is like starting to butt up against my bread basket, wow. and now I'm pissed. And so I uh, and I have to censor myself here, but I didn't censor myself with the palm. I don't care if I'm a public figure. I don't care. I finally looked up at this guy and I said, "This is not Boston. Get the f off our table." <laughs> This is L.A. Because I lived in Boston for a year, and if you don't talk to people like that, they'll they'll flatten you. You right. you have you have to get tough. And these morons, these absolute morons, we'll try to stay out of the way of the wait staff. The guy says to me, "Move in another direction. Get away from me." Right. When this is all over, we're going to live in the most beautiful place in the universe, and you're going to be stuck in Boston, you moron, scraping your winchy. Yeah. So do you still have faith? Do I have faith? What reason would you have to have faith? You know, I love the Lakers like any Angelino. I do. And I have. I think I have watched, the. the, the what have they played, about 100 games? I think I've watched about 80% of them this year. I have watched the Lakers faithfully. Faithfully. Right. 
But you're die hard like I am. So. But no, but no, but you see, if you're a die hard fan, you should know enough to know they just don't have what it takes to beat this team. They don't have it. Last night they had the biggest lead in NBA Finals history. Yeah, first quarter too broke a record. All dude. right. Oh, so God. how do you blow that? I don't know. Cockiness, man. I don't know. The cockiness. They, they had it. They had it. The first Incredible quarter they played, that was the best quarter of basketball I've seen in the playoffs and maybe all season. It was, it was amazing. And we were sitting right down there by the floor. I'm telling you, it was amazing to watch. And, and, and it was so much fun. Um, but the way they uh, just unraveled in the fourth quarter... Come on. If they couldn't put that game away at Staples Center with the lead that they had, why in the world would you? I believe Santa Claus is coming to town before I believe the Lakers win in the next three games. <laughs> nice. Nice. And I'm, I'm willing to bet that there are people right now, there's probably a thousand people on StubHub right now trying to unload Sunday's tickets. I guarantee it. I guarantee you Sylvester Stallone and Eddie Murphy will not be at the game on Sunday. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I mean, the, the rats are jumping the sinking ship. I like what you've been saying about they shouldn't even be there anyway, so at least take it for what it's worth. They've made it this far. But, I mean, if, you're that, if you've made it this far, I mean... I, I talked to people up. during the season who said, well, we don't even need Andrew Bynum. We don't even need him. <laughs> oh, yes, we do. Oh, yes, we do. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm loving to hear you every day. Just got into you uh, a few months ago. Uh, my roommate, about 30-year-old with no kids, like your other caller just said, and uh, loving life. Well, I'm glad you're loving life. Now, now, before I let you go, sure. I'm, I'm giving you the lie detector right now. Do yep. you think the Lakers are going to win the next three games? I think they will you do. win at least two. You do? Yeah, I think it's still going Meaning you think they'll win one in Boston? Uh, uh, they'll, be, they'll win one in Boston. That's and the, your, your reason for believing this is what exactly? You know, if they controlled them last game, if Kobe was in the floor, if Phil called his timeout, slowed the game down, they, I mean, I would say that everyone thought that the series was tied 2-2 by the end of the half. Everyone thought that? Exactly. Including the people who were going up the aisle and leaving the game for long periods of time to go to the bar? Right. So I think if they played the way they did, just like Al O. If you, they you, do, you but on, the, the thing is, from the gods. they don't play. Yeah, yeah. Lamar needs to go back to the gods. I think you're right. Remember when he was with the Clippers, man? He was unstoppable. I mean, he is a number one, two guy. With but he looks like a four or five. No confidence, you know. Uh, and so and and game, I I gotta say this. I gotta say this because I was saying it at the game. I'm gonna say it right now, okay? And again, I say this as a Laker fan. Love them. Love them. Love them. Um, biggest stiff on the floor was not even Lamar Odom. It's Vladimir Rodmanovich. How much are they paying that guy? True, true. What a stiff. He was a stiff with the Clippers. He was a stiff with the Sonics. And he's still a stiff. Yeah, yeah. Those Europeans. No, don't. Too, too many. <laughs> too many Europeans. Here it is again. Wow. I told you, Gary. This This is something people are saying. I've had my ear to the ground all day. I had my ear to the ground because in order to find the sports talk radio stations on the ratings, I had to go all the way to the bottom of the page. So that's why my ear was to the ground. Tom Likas. One of your five eight hundred top. Tom, I've got three words for those uh, stupid men out there that still decide that they're going to get married to these women, and that is prenup, prenup, prenup. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, I'm Tom Lakers. Flash Friday, wide open telephones here. 
800 800 tom This is John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay, John. Great. I just want to call to let you know the uh, Tim Rustard style that went out over the air just a few minutes ago in Los Angeles got cut out. Oh, isn't that interesting? Uh, because uh, nobody at the station told us they were bleeping it. And uh, we had to find out from callers like you, uh, because uh, either the uh, board operator or somebody else uh, just uh, decided not to tell us they were bleeping it out. And uh, uh, But guess what? We're going to play it again so you can hear what it sounds like. Here it is. <laughs> Now, for those people at the radio station who don't like confrontation, if if you got something on the that you've got an issue with, how about you let us know about? How about yeah. that? Okay. Seriously, <laughs> pisses me off. I mean, I'm a reasonable person, you know. I mean, no matter what my persona is on the radio, I'm a professional. Okay. I don't like this cowardly little thing of bleeping things out and then not telling us what you bleeped out. Just tell us what it is. Just tell us why you're doing it. But uh, we also have an engineer over at the radio station who uh, routinely uh, uh, gives his editorial commentary about the show, sends emails to the management about what he thinks about our bumper music and other elements of the program, like he's the assistant program director and, and not the engineer that he is. But, uh, you know, I'm well aware of what he's up to over there, and, uh, you know, this is... Uh, you want to keep playing this game? Fine. Uh, we had a that one time I asked for a complete list of all the things that were bleeped out so we could talk about them and f find out why they were bleeped out. Uh, the engineer never provided that list. The program director never provided it from the engineer. So I, I have never seen a list of things that have been bleeped out of the show, and I can't even tell you what they are. We have to find out when the listener figures out from the context of the show the stuff's been edited. And uh, I don't understand why we just can't have a conversation about this. Uh, rather than having to find out. And then we have to have phone calls like this one on the air, which is, you know, it's, uh, it's like talking about stuff that uh, it's like how sausage is made. And I really don't want to talk about this stuff on the air. Uh, but uh, when it becomes obvious that we're being edited without our knowledge and the listeners, it's so obvious the listeners are calling in and asking questions like you, I have to say something about it. I don't yeah. want to have to be having these conversations. If If someone's got an issue with what I do on the air, uh, if any engineers uh, or uh, aspiring program directors who are running the board down at the radio station would like to have a face-to-face -face with me and specifically tell me what the issues are instead of sending memos to the management, uh, go right ahead. But uh, this this pisses me off. It pisses me off. Be honest with you. Well, I have to tell you, I enjoy your show. I've been a long-time listener and uh, just needed to let you know. I heard it earlier when you first did it when you first came so on. So you heard it the first time. Hour. But uh, it was pretty funny when the guy said, take me out, and then all of a sudden I heard bong uh, sounds. <laughs> so obviously he must have asked for right. Tim Russert and a bong, and all I heard yes, was he bong. Did. Yes, he did. And by the way, we've played it several times, so if you only heard it once, you, you missed it several times. Yeah, and it did go out over the air while you were just talking just now, so maybe they're, uh, you know, they got caught. Well, we made a phone call. We made a phone call over there, and uh, we resolved the issue. But the issue okay. should have been resolved uh, instead of listeners having to tell us about it and us having to make a heated phone call over to headquarters. Uh, this should have been resolved internally, and it wasn't. Well, like I said, I, I enjoy what you do, and I'm sorry you have to put up with stuff like that, but, uh, you know. You know, it's one thing. If you want to debate stuff that is like FCC or whatever, I understand that. I understand that stuff. That, that that's, I'm totally cool with that. You know, but when you start getting into editorial judgments about the stuff we're doing on the air without even telling us about it, that's a whole other story. Yeah, it's uh, like, uh, you know. They're just, like, taking over, I guess. If you want me to do swap shop on the air for five hours every day, I'll do it. Hell, just pay me. <laughs> Hello, Tom. I got a lawnmower for sale. It's, it, it's a Toro. My late husband used to love driving it around the yard. God rest his soul. And I'll take $500 for the most reasonable offer. And I want to give my number. You want me to do a swap shop? I'll do it. I love how you got Ruth Seymour working for you. <laughs> or whoever. Whenever, whenever you put her on, I, I love it. Ruth Seymour. <laughs> Who's Ruth Seymour? I, I'm not even going to get into it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's continue with our business as usual here. Marcus on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Daddy 
Radio. Yeah, hello, son. What's going on, Tom? Just doing a radio show here, Marcus. Yeah, I can tell. So listen, I heard you talking about the Lakers. I'm very upset about it myself. But what would you say if I was to tell you I think that when Bynum comes back next season, we move Pow to power forward, and Phil Jackson is messing with the best triangle offense he's ever had. Well, Marcus, uh, if you haven't uh, been paying attention, that's exactly what the plan was. Uh, uh, Pau Gasol is playing out of position because the Lakers don't have a legitimate center who isn't hurt. Uh, uh, Chris Mim... Uh, who I think his play has been spotty at best. He's been yeah. hurt for the better part of two years. And uh, they traded Kwame Brown, and we know how awful he was. Yeah. So, uh, really, you're down to Roni Turioff, and, and that's your center? Come on. Seriously. So, uh, you know, Powell is Powell the best choice for Lamar. That. Lamar as center? No, to trade Lamar when Bynum comes back. Because well, I, think, I think Lamar is very Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, in his position, to, to be honest, I hate to say choked in the clutch, but uh, you know. Yeah, and I, I would I would also uh, mess to say that Derek Fisher is better than Steve Kerr, so I think that Phil Jackson's probably got a whole better team looking at next season. I think I think Derek Fisher is spectacular, and uh, even on off nights, he brings all kinds of things to that game. Definitely, and you can see it. Well, I'm glad to hear that we still got Laker fans, even though we're losing. Of course, of course. Yeah. We're Laker All fans. Right. Yep. All right, Tom. Well, I love you, man. I listen to you every day. And uh, take me out Tom style. I'm creating one. Tom style? Yeah. Did we ever have a Tom style? How about... No, I, I, I want to make one right now. Oh, you want to make one? All right, yeah. go ahead. So, let's, no, you, you're supposed to make it for me, right? You just said you want to make one. I want, no, I want you to make it for me. I want you to take me out Tom like your style. All right, here it is. Shut All up. Right. Shut up. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! <laughs> yeah. What, did they bleep that? Are we allowed to play that? I won't offend anybody. 1-800, I think I'm going to do a whole show and just not offend anybody for an entire day. I'm going to give the people what they want. 1-800-5800-TOM, it's Steve on the Tom Likas Show, Hello. <laughs> hey Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Very good. As the uh, as an employee of a restaurant that you mentioned earlier, um, I have to tell you, I've never really experienced in the the number of finals or off season or uh, postseason games that the Lakers have had. I've never experienced the amount of personal disrespect and watched the amount of disrespect that played towards other team like other teams players or whatnot that I've ever experienced from this crowd. I uh, I I I detest uh, not the history and the architecture of the city of Boston, uh, the people. Having lived in Boston for a year, uh, never a more self-hating bunch of alcoholic, redneck, fist-fighting morons have I ever met ever. Well, it's really extraordinary. I mean, my entire family is from the you know the redneck nation, Mobile, Alabama, and still I've never experienced the sensation of having. People being as rude and as obnoxious, and I that's that's amazing. exactly what they are. The Tom Likas Show.